Okay, today we're going to have some fun with JavaScript. We're not going to build a complete game, but we're going to build the start of a game. And this game is something that inspired me a long time ago. It's from the Amiga time. I don't know if you ever had an Amiga. If you're younger, you probably don't know what it is, but Amiga was a great computer and it shaped my life very heavily. So there was a game that's called Gravity Force that I played a lot on the Amiga. We're going to build a little vector spaceship that you can control with your keyboard and that is affected by gravity. So that's what we're going to do. That's only a start of a game, not a complete game, but it will be a good practice using the HTML canvas and a little bit of vanilla JavaScript. So I hope you will enjoy it. All right, so let's take a look at what we're building in this tutorial. This, we have this little nice vector spaceship here. It's really just a triangle, so yeah, call it whatever you want. In my imagination, it's a spaceship. And if I reload this, this one is also going to be affected by gravity, so it will fall down, but I have disabled that one now. Then you can control this with your keyboard and drive around like this, and it will cycle through the canvas like this. And yeah, whoa. I haven't cut the speed now, so it can have really high speeds. So this is what we're building. And uh, as I told you before, it's not a complete game. Uh, it's just the beginning to a game. But I think it's a good practice in using the canvas and also request animation frame that we're going to use to animate this one. So this is what we're building. So let's get inside our code editor. And I've just created a folder that I called Spaceship. I'm not setting up a server or anything like this. You could use Parcel or something to set up your environment. But I'm just going to cre create an HTML file and a JavaScript file for this one. So I have this folder that I call Spaceship. I create a new file, index.html, and I create another file that I call script. Now we can call it uh, game.js. So inside the HTML file, we create some standard HTML. Then we have an HTML tag like that, and we have a head. And inside a head, we can have a title. What should it say? <laughs> Spaceship, maybe. Yeah, something like that. And then below the head, we have a body. And of course, I can also bump up the font size so you see what I'm doing here. So we have a body, and then we create a canvas with an ID of game, and we can set the width. I think I'm going to have it kind of small, 800, and the height, 500 maybe, something like that. And we have a closing canvas tag also. So this is how you create a canvas in HTML. This is the only one that we're going to use for our game, or what you call it, yeah, not really a game. All right, then we import our script. Down below here, we have an SRC, and we import our game.js, like that. Do some auto formatting, and this is the only HTML that we're going to need. All right. Save it and go inside the game.js file, and so first we can create an immediately, invoke, immediately invoked function expression. Uh, I usually do this because uh, this will not pollute the global scope. So you do that by have a parenthesis a function like this. So we have a function here and we immediately call it like this. So this will make sure that our variables and everything we create here is scoped to this function and will not and it will not pollute the global scope. So that's great. We can just see so this works. We do a console log testing and save it and go back to our browser. I just drag my index file here to Chrome. And of course, it's showing nothing now. So I'm going to open up the console. And as you can see here, testing. Don't know what this is. Issues detected. Well, I don't think we have any issues now. We have a new issues panel here in Chrome. OK, great. It's uh, showing us testing here, so we know that it's working, and that's great. So back to our code. And to be honest, I'm going to do this fairly quickly because 
I can explain this all day because this is uh, we are going to use some advanced stuff like trigonometry, and I'm not going to explain that in detail about sinus and cosinus. So when we get there, I will tell you a little bit about it, but you have to look that up more if you're interested in learning that kind of math. And to be honest, you don't really need to know this stuff, I think, to be a web developer. I have don't think I ever come through it, maybe once or something or two. I don't really remember. So this is just for fun. I create these small kind of uh, games and stuff just for fun. And when I also want to practice my JavaScript skills to, and uh, new skills to learn. So this is just for fun. And I'm not really an expert in math either, to be honest. <laughs> okay. So we have our console log, it's working, so we can remove that one. And first we're going to grab our canvas, so we create a const canvas. And from the document, we get element by ID. Or we could use query selector if we want to do that. And we named our canvas the game. We set an ID of game on that one, as you can see here. So that's the one that we grab in grabbing here, right? So we have our canvas, and then we have to create a context. You have two contexts on, on the canvas. You have a 2D and a 3D context. We are going to use the, the 2D context. So we create a const, call it context. And from the canvas that we just grabbed, we get the context. And we want the 2D context. So this is the one that we're going to use to draw on the, on the canvas. For this spaceship to work, we need one class for the spaceship. I'm using classes in this tutorial, and we need a draw function inside of that class for the spaceship. And also we need a function inside of that class to move the spaceship. Then we need a function to handle the key inputs, and we need a, a kind of a main draw function that will draw everything on the canvas. So that's what we're going to build here. And we can create some initial consts, and I use capital letters on these ones. We can change these ones. If we want to change these values inside of our code, we just change these consts here. So we have the spaceship underscore size. We set the width, it's an object. So we set the width of 20 and we set the height of 30. All right. We have a const with the spaceship underscore position. So this is going to be the start position we can set here. We have the X value of 200, and we have the Y value of 200. And this You could also create an object for this one to have a vector object, but I'm just doing it like this for simplicity's sake. All right, then we can set the gravity. And I'm going to start with a zero because we don't want to have the gravity when we try things out. And we're also going to have a thrust. And the thrust is going to be when we yeah, have some thrust on the spaceship when we press the up key on our keyboard. And I'm going to set that to five. So these are values that I've tried out and I, you can change and play around with these ones if you want to do that. Then we're going to have our class that we call spaceship. Like that, we can just leave it for that now and going to scaffold out the other stuff that we need. We need a function to handle the key inputs. It's a function. Handle key input, and it's going to take in the event. I think I made, yeah, I can move this like that to be consistent. All right, so this is the function that is going to handle the key input. Then we need a draw function. Function draw like that. And we can have a console log inside of that one also that says drawing. So that we know that we're drawing something, all right? And then lastly, we're going to have some event listeners. We're going to have two of them, one that checks for the key down and one that checks for the key up. And we can add those ones now. Document dot add event listener parenthesis. We have quotes and we check for key down first. And it's going to call the handle key input function that we created up here. 
And then we listen for document.add event listener. We're going to listen for the key up like that. And it's going to call the same function. So that's our event listeners. And then below here, we can start the game. So we call our draw function. That's going to be the main function that runs the game. And, this, and it's this function here, All right? Okay, so I think we can start to draw something on our canvas to see that it works. So inside our draw function, every time that we draw something on the canvas, we have to clear the canvas for the next frame. Because if you don't clear the canvas, it will just keep adding stuff to the canvas. And we obviously don't want that because we don't want to show the whole trail when the spaceship moves. So we have to clear the canvas for each frame. So clear canvas. And we have our context that we grabbed up here. So we're going to use that now to draw on the canvas context dot. We set the fill style to be equal to, I want it to be black because we're in space. We're going to fill the canvas with a black color on each frame when we redraw the canvas. So context, we set the fill style first to draw on the canvas. Then from the context, we call the fill rect. <laughs> Did you see that? I, I instantly typed out fill react because I worked that much with react. So it's in my fingers. It should be fill rect, not fill react. Okay. Okay. So fill rect, this one takes in four values. We have the start position and that's going to be at zero. That's the X position and the Y position is also going to be at zero. And then we're going to draw to the canvas dot width and to the canvas dot height. So this will fill our complete canvas with a black color, hopefully. So we save this one, go back inside of our, of our uh, inside of Chrome. We have this black rectangle now, and that's great. That's our canvas that we're showing here. So we know that our draw function works. Great. Back inside of the code. And we'll leave the draw function for now. We can actually start creating our spaceship now. And we created this class here. I can remove the sidebar. We created this class here, spaceship. And first, the class needs a constructor. So we have the constructor. And when we create the spaceship, we are going to give it the size and the position. So this is how you specify these arguments in a class. You have the constructor and then you name your arguments, just like in a regular function. Everything we do inside of the constructor will be created on each instance of this class. This is not on the prototype. And we're in a class, so we have to use the this keyword here. So we set the this color, and I'm going to set the color to white on the spaceship, on the outlines. It's going to be an outline triangle. Then we have the this size. And the size, we are sending that one in here. So we're going to set that one to the size that we send in. This dot position, same for this. We set that one to the position that we send in here. Then we have this dot angle. This is going to hold the value on how much we have rotated the spaceship. And we have this engine on. We set that one to false. This one is going to be true when we press the up key on the keyboard and have some thrust on the spaceship. This dot rotating left. I think this one says it all. <laughs> it's going to be false. And it's obviously going to be true when we press the left key on the keyboard. And then we have rotating right. We set that one to false. So this is for all the keys that we press on the keyboard to control the spaceship. And then we have this last one, and that is, and that is the velocity. We need to know the velocity of the spaceship to, move, to be able to move it on the canvas. So we have this dot velocity, and this one is going to be an object. So I set the x to zero, and I set the y to zero as initial values on this one. And as you can see here, if we had this vector class or vector object, we could use this here also. 
and also use it here. But in this case, I create new objects instead. All right. So that's the constructor for a spaceship. And below the constructor, we can create the prototype functions. So we have a draw function. And this one is going to handle the drawing of the spaceship. So we're going to draw a triangle. And this is going to be a little bit strange because when you draw stuff on the canvas, it can be strange, especially when you rotate stuff. And I'm going to hopefully explain this for you now so you understand it. First, I want the center point of my triangle spaceship. So I create a const, call it triangle center x. This is the x position of the center. So from this position, dot x, so we have the start position where the spaceship currently is. And then I add 0 0.5 times this dot size dot height. So we start at the position where the spaceship is, and then we move in half of the height. And that will give us the x position of the center point in the spaceship. All right. Then we have the const triangle center y. And from this dot position dot y, that's the y position, we have 0 0.5 times this dot size dot. Uh, this one should, of course, be width, because that's the x position. And this one should be height. That's the y position. So from the y position where we're currently at, we add half of the height and that will give us the center position of the triangle in the y on the y axis. So here we have the x and y center points for the spaceship. All right, and when you draw on the canvas, you have to first save the previous state on the canvas because we are going to translate the canvas and so it's really important to save the previous state because we're going to translate the canvas and then we're going to return to that state it was in before. So we can do that from context we have something that's called save. This will save the previous state of the canvas, kind of like in a stack of different states for the canvas. Then we want to rotate the spaceship and we can't really rotate the spaceship itself. We have to rotate the canvas. So we have to translate the canvas to move it down to the center of the spaceship. And that will change the pivot point on the canvas so that we rotate the spaceship around its own axis. It's kind of hard to explain this. And I think if you haven't worked with canvas before this will seem strange to you and I think this video won't do enough uh, in all honesty to, to explain this one for you so I think you have to look that one up even more because it is kind of strange it took a lot of time for me to wrap this around my head to actually understand how canvas works but you don't rotate the object itself you rotate the canvas and you have to move the pivot point on the canvas to the center of the spaceship so we can do that by calling context translate. And we have parentheses, and we have our triangle center x and our triangle center y that we created up here. And this will move the pivot point on the canvas to the center of a spaceship. And then we can rotate the complete canvas. It's the canvas we rotate, not the spaceship itself. So context rotate, and we have this dot angle that we created up here, and it's zero right now. This one is going to change when we move the spaceship and rotate it later. So we rotate the canvas. When we have translated and rotated the canvas, we can actually start drawing our spaceship. So context.line width, I set that one to one. And then we're going to draw a path. So context.begin path. And here we have the actual triangle. We're going to need four rows to draw a triangle. And I actually created kind of a little illustration for this one here, because this is a little bit <laughs> hard to explain, I think. And I, I don't, I'm not really sure if I understand everything myself yet. Okay, so this is the triangle this, that we're going to draw, and we have a center point here. We have moved our canvas, so our pivot point is in the center of the triangle that we want to draw. And we want to start to draw the triangle up here. And that means the zero for the x position is currently here in the middle because we moved the canvas here. So this is the, the, the kind of corner of the canvas. It continues on here and on here down below. 
So this is the corner of the canvas. If we move from here up there, that means that the y position is going to be minus the height of the triangle divided by two. The half of the height of the triangle, we're going to move in the minus direction because this is y zero here. So, so we have the x zero and the y is minus this size height divided by two, okay? Then from this point, we're going to draw down here. And this is half the width of the spaceship, but we're moving from this point, so it's minus, and it's plus on the y-axis because we're moving here. So this size dot width divided by two minus, and the y is going to be this dot size height divided by two. All right, I guess you're already confused by this and don't feel bad if you're confused because I'm confused myself and I think I need to have some coffee now. Okay, so this is the point here and then we move from this point to this point here. And this is going to be this size width divided by two because now we're on the plus side of the X axis and we're still on the plus side on the y axis also. So this is going to be this dot size dot height divided by two. And then from here, we can just close the path and it will automatically create a line up to this point. So this is how this works. And, and it can be quite confusing, confusing, I think, because the coordinates change. We have x zero and y zero here now in the center of the spaceship. It's not up here where we think the canvas is because we can see the corner of the canvas on the screen here. So it's actually here in the center of the spaceship. And we're going to create this triangle now and translate this one to code. And I'm actually going to provide this uh, illustration also in the link below this video where I present the finished code. All right, so back to the code editor and then we draw the triangle. So context dot move to, we're first going to move to that point that I showed you up here. We're not drawing anything, we're just moving to this point because we want to start drawing from this point. So context move to, and the x value is going to be zero, and the y value is going to be minus this dot size dot height divided by two, all right? And then we draw a line, context, line two. We're going to draw the x value is going to be minus this, this dot size dot width divided by two. And the y value is going to be this dot size dot height divided by two. Then we draw again context line two, and we draw to this dot size dot width divided by two. And then we draw to this dot size dot height divided by two. And, and then we can close the path. So context dot close path. And this will create the triangle for us. But we have created a triangle now. We're not actually showing up on the canvas because we have to stroke it also because we have created an, kind of an invisible spaceship now, an, an invisible triangle. So context, stroke style, is going to be this dot color. We set the color up here to white and context dot stroke. A lot of rows just to draw a triangle, but this is how context works. And we can actually see if this one works. So down below first in our draw function here, we have also to create an instance of this uh, spaceship, of course. So down below the spaceship class, create a const that we call spaceship camel case equals a new spaceship. And we're going to send in the initial spaceship size and the initial spaceship position. Spaceship underscore position. And these are the ones that we created up here. So we're sending these ones in as an initial value when we create an instance of this class. So hopefully we have an instance of the spaceship in this spaceship const now. So in our draw function, when we have created the black background here, when we redraw the canvas, we can 
call or draw function in the spaceship spaceship dot draw all right save the file go back to chrome or whatever browser you're using and as you can see we have our nice little triangle here and nothing more happens of course because we have just created this small triangle with all of this code it's insane but it's how it works and you can probably optimize it some more but uh, yeah i haven't done that so yeah as always as i'm used to say now in these kind of tutorials you have to live live with it that i do it my way okay so that's the spaceship back to the code we want to move this spaceship now and we have our handle key input function here so we can first create that one we are getting the event here so i'm going to destructure out from the event const i'm going to destructure out the key code and the type from the event then i create the new const that i call is key down i'm going to check if we have pushed the down key on this one if the type equals to key down it checks if the event is the key down event and i set this one to true otherwise it's false because we're obviously not pressing the key down so this is a turner operator here it's really nice to use in these kinds of situations okay so we have our event we know if we're pressing the key down otherwise we're pressing the key up so we have to check which key we are pressing on the keyboard so if key code equals 37 37 is the left key on the keyboard so we have the spaceship dot rotating left equals is key down so this one is going to be true or false depending on if we press the up or down key on our keyboard then we can actually copy this one and paste it in two more times and we change the key code here to 39 that is going to be the right key on the keyboard like that and then we have the last one that's the up key and that one is the 38 and then we set engine on so when the engine is on we're going to move the we're going to give the spaceship some thrust so that's all we need for the handle key input this is going to take care of all the key inputs all right so we are getting the key inputs here and now we have to move this spaceship depending on what keys are pressed and also what velocity it has so down below our draw function inside of the spaceship class be sure to be inside of the class here we have a function that we call move spaceship and this one is going to be kind of a complex one but we have to do this because this is how it works and this is also where we're going to use uh, trigonom trigonomot trigonomat trigomet trigometry trigometry i think it's you know, very very hard words here for me to say trigometry trigonometry and this is where we're also going to use the cosinus and sinus to calculate in what direction we should move but first we have to do a little bit of conversion so angle has to be in radians we can't specify degrees here so we have to convert it to radians const deg to rad and a radians is the math dot pi divided by 180 we get the radians for one degree by dividing the pi with 180 degrees because 180 degrees is half a circle so we convert the degrees to radians here instead all right then we're going to change the position based on velocity all right so we have this dot position dot x plus equals we're going to change we're going to we're going to add something to the same value here so we're mutating this one this dot velocity dot x and yeah i'm mutating it if you work with react you should probably whoa go crazy now and but sometimes like in this 
situation where you create games, it's uh, very convenient to actually mutate a value. And it's actually completely fine to mutate the value in other cases than React. React don't want you to, to mutate the value, and you shouldn't do that in React. But in this case, it's fine to mutate the value. It, it's nothing wrong to mutate values in JavaScript if it's used the right way. Okay, so then we have the disposition dot y plus equals this velocity dot y. Okay, so this one is going to change the position of the spaceship depending on the velocity. And now we have to calculate the velocity for the spaceship. And this is probably the hardest part in this tutorial. So first we can handle the turning. If this dot rotating left, we check if we are rotating left. This dot angle plus equals deg to rad. So if we, uh, this should actually be, no, sorry, this should be minus. So if we are rotating left, we're constantly rotating one degree to the left. All right, and if this dot rotating right, if we're rotating right, this angle is going to be plus equals deg to rad. So if we're rotating right, we're, we're constantly for each frame rotating one degree to the right. So that's the turning, and then we have the acceleration. All right, so if this dot ending on, if we are pressing the up key on the keyboard, we know that we want to give it some thrust. So this dot velocity dot x plus equals, and now we have to calculate this one with the cosinus and the sinus. And to simplify it, I can say it like this, um, and I don't really know if it's a good explanation, but by using sinus, we get the x position on the rotation of the spaceship. And by using cosinus, we get the y position on the rotation on the spaceship. And we also have to take into account that we have thrust on this one. So we have our thrust that we set up here. It's five now, and that value is a little bit high, so I have to divide it by 100. And I did it just so we don't have to specify 0 0.05 up there instead. So I, I correct this one here by dividing it by 100. And then we multiply this by math dot sin. Sin. Sin, sin. Yeah, it's sin, but it's spelled sin. And we give it this dot angle, and this is going to give us the correct exposition of the rotation. Math dot sin, or yeah, sine, the sine value is going to give you a value between minus one and one, so we use that value to calculate on how we should set the velocity depending on how the spaceship is rotated. And you can see now that it gets very complicated to explain this because this is kind of advanced math and um, it's a topic in itself. It, it will probably need a much longer video than this to explain all this math. So you have to look that one up, but trust me, by using the sine value and the cosine value, we can get these values. And then we have the this dot velocity dot y minus equals, we have the thrust again, we divide it by 100, and we multiply it by math dot cos, that's the cosine, and we give it this dot angle. And it's this one that wants this value in radians, so that's why we convert it up here. Okay, so that's the acceleration, and then we can update the velocity depending on gravity. Okay, so this dot velocity dot y plus equals gravity divided by 100. So this is the gravity that we set, and I do exactly the same thing here. I divide it, I correct this value by dividing it by 100, so we can have a much more convenient value up here. So this is going to take in the account of the gravity. So for each frame, it's going to add the gravity. If we have a gravity, we set it to zero now, so we won't get affected by this gravity. And this is all we need in the move spaceship uh, function for now. So we can save this one, go 
go down to our draw function and just below here above the spaceship.draw we can call the spaceship dot move spaceship and this is not going to do anything now because we also have to constantly draw new frames so I call it repeat and then we call request animation frame and we give it the draw function again and this one is going to calculate and update the optimal frames that we need because if we could set this on a timer or something but that's no good you should use request animation frame because it will calculate when the frame needs to be drawn depending on the refresh rate on the monitor and stuff like that we don't want to draw unnecessary frames because it can be very costful to draw stuff on the canvas all right save it go back to our little spaceship here reload it we have to oh that's no good that's no good at all but you can see that it's drawing here and if we want to pause this one you can go to sources and then you have this pause button here i have to check why it isn't working now okay i'm back and uh, i actually forgot to do something here first in the draw function in the spaceship class down below here we have to call context dot restore otherwise we won't restore the canvas that we saved up here just before we made all the changes here so very important context restore like this below here and also these ones here in the handle key input I had these as strings like this. They shouldn't be strings. They should, of course, be numbers. So remove those ones. Otherwise, the controls won't work. So make sure that you have numbers here. And save the file. Go back to the Chrome. And we can try it out. And as you can see, we fly around. And that's sweet. But there's one thing here. You can see it just disappears. So we have to cap this one so it will return on the other side when we leave the side here. And also at the top, so it returns at the bottom. And if we leave the bottom, it should return at the top. Yeah, you get the point. So pause it like this and go back to our code. And inside our move spaceship function in the spaceship class. Up here, before we turn, we can put a comment here, move spaceship to other side when leaving screen. You can do some if statements to control if it leaves the, the borders of the canvas. But I think this is a perfect use case to use modulus. So we, this position dot x, we change the x position depending on canvas dot width plus this position dot x. And we use the modulus on the canvas dot height. And this will cap it and keep the spaceship inside of the canvas. You can try it out in the console or something if you want to check the values, but this, this will make sure that when we reach the end of the canvas, it will return to the zero position. And if we leave the zero position to a minus value, it will change this value to the width of the canvas. So this will keep the spaceship inside of the canvas all the time. And we can do exactly the same for the Y value. So canvas, dot height plus this dot position dot y we use the modulus on the canvas dot height there and of course this one should be width i keep mixing these values up that's no good so the width and the height and this is a perfect example of, of when modulus is great to use you don't need to use those different if statements to check for this so save it, go back to Chrome, reload it, we try it out. And you can see that it keeps popping up on the other side, and that's great. I love this one here. You can actually create a racing game, a top-down racing game, and have a car instead, I think. Yeah, all right, but let's not do that now. Let's finish this one. We have one more thing to do because we want that nice little fire on the spaceship to light up when you when you give it some thrust. So inside the spaceship class and in the draw function, that's just above the restore 
call that we did here. We can put a new command flame from for engine like that. And if this dot engine on, we check if the engine is on. If the user is giving the spaceship some thrust, we create a new const fire y pos equals this dot size dot height divided by two. And then I want to offset it a little bit. So I give it five pixels more because the fire, I want it to be a little bit away from the spaceship. And const fire x pos equals this dot size dot width. And I want this to be smaller than the spaceship, so I multiply it by dot 25 in this case. You can play around with these values if you want to do that. And then, just as before, we have already translated our context and everything here, so we don't have to do that again. We can begin, we can start drawing because we're resetting the context here. So we start drawing of fire context dot begin path. Context, we move to, and in this case, we want to have the x value to be minus fire x position and the fire y position. And these values that I use here, it's uh, I calculated them the same way as I did with the spaceship, so you have to calculate them for yourself. But believe me, these values work, so just use them, or if you want to understand them, try to create a little illustration that I did before and. It's always good to draw stuff if you don't get it how it works. And especially in this case, it's hard actually to, to remember all the positions in your head and get a clear picture of what values to use. All right, so we move this one to that position and then we con and then from context dot line to fire x position to the fire y position. Like that. And then we do another context line two from zero to fire y position. It should have a capital P there also. So fire y pos. And then I'm going to use math.random here because I want it to be different heights. So it's it kind of feels like it's a flame that's moving up or down. So math uh, random, and we multiply that by 50. So this will cap it, so it will create random values between zero and 50. Context dot line two, minus fire x position and plus fire y position. And I know this seems a little bit strange and I probably don't explain it too much now. And as I said, this is very complex stuff and this video is already getting too long. So you have to look this up yourself if you want to really understand these values. Then from the context dot, I close the path like that. And I set the context fill style. I want this one to have a color of orange and I context dot fill it. We are not creating a stroke as we do up here. We fill this one instead and it should have these ones here because this is function. This is a method that we call. All right, do some auto formatting and save it and hopefully this will work. Go back to the browser. Oh, whoa, <laughs> that's a long flame. I must have done something wrong here, okay? Pause it, go back to the code. Yeah, and I know what I did wrong. It shouldn't be times there, it should be a plus. So make sure you change that one, otherwise you'll have this, this crazy long fire behind the spaceship. So a plus at that row here instead. We add the math random times 50 instead of multiplying. Save it, go back to the browser, and let's see what we got. And we got the spaceship. And that's great, it's working, I'm so happy. And let's pause it, go back and see, yeah, 
I think we build a spaceship with roughly 100 rows of code. And that's great. If we remove the comments and console logs, it will be probably less than 100 rows of code. So this is all you need to create something like this. And this is something you can build from if you want to create a space game like this. It's not a complete game. I hope you enjoy this one and learn some stuff, especially on Canvas and stuff like that. And see you in another video.